Well, obviously they survived, but what are they up to now? Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 survivor winners. Where are they now? To win this game, it's really hard. Yeah. So everybody has a little notch on their belt that you gotta respect. We're taking a look at various winners of Survivor and seeing what they've been up to since their time on the show. Let's get to it. I, I just wanna come out and play the game and, and just, I wanna appear strong. Number 10, Aris Bushkowskis. During his time on Survivor Panama, Aris was working as a yoga instructor in Santa Monica. The winner of Survivor XLI. Not exactly the kind of person you'd expect to win Survivor, but that's what made things so interesting. In 2013, Aris competed once again in Survivor Blood vs. Water and became the season's first jury member. I saw it coming in a lot of ways, but not enough ways to make me do something about it. Outside of Survivor, Aris released a music album called The Tree in the River under the stage name Odd Us. Now that's an album title we expect from an ex-yoga instructor. It's, it's named after the title song The Tree in the River, which is about a tree that falls in love with a river and eventually drowns in the river. In 2014, Aris competed in the Mr. Survivor competition on Rob Sesternino's Rob Has a Podcast. He's also become a family man as he now has two children with his wife, Christy. Number 9. Jenna Maraska. Maraska was the winner of season 6, The Amazon. The winner of Survivor Amazon. She also stripped for peanut butter and chocolate alongside Heidi Strobel. I take my clothes off for chocolate and peanut butter. Since winning Survivor, Jenna has continued in the realm of reality TV. She competed on Fear Factor in 2005, and she and then boyfriend Ethan Zahn competed in season 19 of The Amazing Race, where they finished 10th. In 2012, Jenna graduated from Columbia with a master's in counseling and clinical psychology. Unfortunately, Jenna's life took a depressing turn thereafter. In 2018, she was arrested for a DUI and drug possession after police found her passed out at a stop sign. Her passenger was in possession of syringes, a burnt spoon, and cotton balls. It's just closure to a chapter in our life that I don't think will ever be fully closed, but we're just kind of putting the bookmark in it and closing it for right now. Number 8. Brian Heideck. The winner of Survivor Thailand. Brian. Heidek is easily one of the most controversial Survivor players of all time. He's been called cold-hearted, emotionless, and even sociopathic. Ladies in the kitchen and the men take care of business and do all the fishing. Um, that resorts back to thousands and thousands of years. Unfortunately, the controversy extends beyond his win on Survivor Thailand, as he was arrested in 2006 for shooting a puppy with an arrow. Brian claims that he thought the dog was a violent coyote. Regardless, he was charged with battery and cruelty to animals. He has mostly remained under the radar since that controversial incident. However, we do know that he remarried sometime in the mid-2000s and now has a total of four children, one with his first wife, Charmaine C.C. Costigan, and the rest with second wife, Courtney Heideck. Number 7. Ethan Zahn and on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Ethan Zahn, who is typically regarded as one of the nicest and most well-liked Survivor contestants. The winner of Survivor Africa. <laughs> Quickly after winning Africa in 2002, Ethan helped create a nonprofit called Grassroots Soccer, a soccer-centric health organization whose curriculum that both John Hopkins and Stanford University have considered effective. But as is often the case, life steamrolled the nice and selfless Ethan, as he was diagnosed with a rare form of Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2009. And then, <sighs> sideswiped. Fortunately, he is now cancer-free thanks to life-saving stem cell transplants. Ethan is now a medical cannabis advocate, an investor in a CBD farm in Vermont, and an ambassador for Gabrielle's Angel Foundation for Cancer Research. Just Getting here yeah. is an absolute miracle. I was diagnosed with a rare form of blood cancer, had two bone marrow transplants, mm -hmm. but I'm healthy mm -hmm. and I'm seven years in remission and I'm here <laughs> yeah. and I'm alive. Number six, John Cochran. Cochran, as he loves to be called, was an enormous Survivor fan and his essay on the Survivor jury system won the Dean's Scholar Prize at Harvard. And while Cochran didn't perform well during his first go-round on South Pacific, he later played a perfect game and unanimously won in Caramone in 2013. The winner of Survivor Fans vs. Favorites, Cochran! Immediately after winning, Jeff Probst introduced him to TV producer Greg Garcia, who gave Cochran a job writing for the Millers. About Janice. Janice and I split up. What? Janice and I got divorced. What? 
While that show didn't last too long, Cochran transferred over to Kevin James' sitcom Kevin Can Wait, where he served as staff writer and story editor. I got the guys coming over at 11 for a little day drinking. <laughs> then we're all gonna learn how to use crossbows. Number five, Danny Boatwright. So hopefully my plan will work to rat Judd out. And here we come to one of Survivor's scrappiest of underdogs. Danny played a brilliant game and helped secure her unpredictable win thanks to some clutch immunities and prosperous personal relationships. The winner of Survivor Guatemala. <laughs> Not long after winning Guatemala, Danny had her first child with husband Casey Wiegman, a son named Bo. In 2010, she gave birth to her second son, Stone. She currently lives in Kansas City with her family and started a sports clothing label called Sideline Chic with her friend Julie Zitlow. She's also written a series of children's books, the first of which was released in October 2018. Number 4. Sandra Diaz Twine Sandra is one of the most prolific contestants in Survivor history. For one thing, she is the show's only two-time winner, having won Pearl Islands in 2003 and Heroes vs. Villains in 2010. If anybody has the hidden immunity idol... Should I let you finish? No need. She was welcomed back yet again in 2017 and competed in Game Changers. However, this go-round did not prove as fortuitous, as Sandra was the sixth contestant voted out. Following that, she became one of the two mentors living on the titular island of the Idols. But this right here, I was like, this is killing me. That season, which was the show's most recent and most controversial, concluded in December 2019. Sandra will don the old Survivor garb and compete yet again in Winners at War in 2020. And here we are. Number 3. Parvati Shallow Shallow is another Survivor regular and is widely considered to be one of the greatest players of the show. As of 2019, she had competed in three iterations of Survivor over the years. Her original appearance was on Cook Islands, where she finished sixth. She was also the runner-up on Heroes vs. Villains and won the Fans vs. Favorites season in Micronesia. You're crazy. You officially go down as the dumbest Survivor ever in the history of Survivor. Ever. From 2013 to 2014, she hosted Survivor After Show, also known as Survivor Live, a CBS.com exclusive talk show where Shallow talked to eliminated contestants. Hey everyone, welcome to Survivor Live. Shallow gave birth to her first child in July 2018 and is scheduled to compete alongside past winners on Winners at War. There's no way I can hold anything back. Number two, Amber Mariano. So if you're basing your votes on who had a stronger word and who broke their word, I think I didn't really break my word as much to you as Rob did. Amber and her husband Rob are two of the most popular Survivor contestants of all time. Amber appeared on both the Australian Outback and All Stars, which she won, while Rob competed on Marquesas, All Stars, Heroes vs. Villains, and Redemption Island, which he won. I think the biggest thing I've learned through this, um, being my fourth time, is that I need to stop playing games. It's time to put it to rest. This is the last day I will ever play. At this point, I need to go home and take care of my wife and my children. The two quickly became certified reality TV stars, and they subsequently competed twice on The Amazing Race. They placed second in season seven and were the fourth team eliminated in the All-Star season. The couple have since had four daughters, the youngest of which was born in 2014. They're both scheduled to compete yet again in Winners at War. It's supposed to be a once in a lifetime thing. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to do it a third time and two times I've gotten to play with my husband. That's crazy. Yeah. So who's taking care of the kids? Grandparents are at home spoiling them. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Richard Hatch Hatch will always be remembered as the very first Survivor winner, having won Borneo all the way back in 2000. The winner of the first Survivor competition is Rich. Feel old yet? Unfortunately, this win proved incredibly problematic for Mr. Hatch. In 2005, Hatch was charged with tax evasion after failing to report approximately $1.3 million. According to Hatch's defense claim, he believed that CBS had paid the taxes prior to awarding him the money. I never did anything deserving of prison time. I never attempted to evade taxes, which is what I was convicted of. And I've never not paid or not filed any tax returns my entire life. 
Unfortunately, that's not how tax works, and Richard was sentenced to a hefty 51 months in federal prison. In 2016, a 314-pound Richard competed on The Biggest Loser Temptation Nation. I wouldn't be fat if I didn't want to be fat. So clearly, I want to be fat. Why? That's my journey, that's why I'm here. While he lost 34 pounds, he was the fourth contestant to be eliminated. In 2017, he filed for divorce from his husband of 12 years, Emiliano Cabral. My starting weight's 314, so maybe 225 might be a stunning, smoking hot weight for this guy. <laughs> We guess winning Survivor doesn't always guarantee you financial and personal success. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And check out this video.